Hi everybody. Hi everyone. We are back. Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. New Year. Happy New Year. Merry everything. Merry solstice. Whatever you believe or not believe Yule. in. You know. Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. What did you call me? So yo. <laughs> Keeps it's going. A, it's There's enough many. now. Stop. Stop cursing at me. <laughs> anyway. Um, happy time. Hopefully a happy time. Hopefully a a time to relax. Relax a Rest. little bit. Go and, inward. You know, it's going to be important. Um, we wanted to talk today a little bit about... 2023. 2023. Um, but before we start, I want to say, please like and subscribe and share. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> like, subscribe and share. Because, the, you know, for us... For us, this is really something that we do from our heart. We're not making money from this or, you know, we're not making anything from it. And, um, you know, there were suggestions that we should maybe, you know, update the look a little bit and make it more professional. Make it, but we don't want to. We want to make it homey. We want to make it homey. It's just you, me. I mean, you know, and you've a, seen these faces. And a camera. And a camera. And, you know, it's um, in, in our understanding at this point, we just want to keep it really simple and hopefully... You know, you sit at home with, you know, a cup of coffee like me and we just share, we just share in a simple form. And the so, feedback was, make it more professional looking. <laughs> no, um, you know, and usually we, we are very much all about, um, especially our videos, you put a lot, a lot of work in it from yes. the content to producing it. Vimeos, and yes. The Vimeos, right. But this is just for fun, right? So let's enjoy this a little bit. Otherwise, if I would take it serious, I would have a facelift by tomorrow. A studio. You know, <laughs> a studio and... Very high-end cameras. You know. <laughs> but this is now what we do. 2023. Okay. The year is almost over, the calendar year. And of course, when we, when we come to the end of a year, we all are full of ideas what we want to do next and how we want to approach things a lot of our sessions we are packed basically with sessions at this point the main theme is what can i do what should i do what what outlook can i have in 2023 and the difficulty is in this you cannot just take somebody individually and put them into from calendar to, calendar to calendar you know what i mean otherwise we all would wear the same underwear mm. it is really important a year changes on the high point which is your birthday like my best friend her birthday is january 1st so i mean she's doomed you know what i mean uh <laughs> she couldn't even as a child she told me never really enjoy <laughs> christmas because she thought new year's was for her um so um always we will talk a little bit about the consideration of your birthday and the placement of your birthday and this is Again, we're not going to go too much into the detail, but 2023... You need a session for that. <laughs> absolutely, you know. Private. But 2023 is, in numerology, a seven-year. Mm. And I come from numerology. I studied it up and down, inside out. And a seven-year, in my... Is always internal. This is not a year, not for everybody, but in general, not a year to be risky. No. Because, Financially not risky. No, no, but it is rather a place where also I'm going to talk a little bit about it, where certain placements help you through the strictness of Saturn, which is very dominant this year, because I'm going to talk a little bit about the transits of these planets as well. Capricorn. Um, it can make you, it can help you to make dreams a reality, which is something that you want. You know, that is a great concept. But for this is a year where what we always say and we repeat ourselves so often the inner work is essential essential it, especially this, this year what would you say so the inner work is a consistent spiritual practice mm. i would consider that an inner work an inner work is to take something that was once quite esoteric quite spiritual like a, a ritual or a ceremony or something and make it modern make it fit to your everyday life mm -hmm. For instance, I'm doing a Vimeo now on sex mm -hmm. and, and magic. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to explain that sexuality might actually be a path for us mm -hmm. to reach enlightenment because it now is integrated into the modern world and we have a much more open quality about sex. The way we talk about it, sexual identity, non-binary, you know, 
how, when, at what point we define ourselves. In, sexuality is one of the most essential powers that we have. That's why religion and society try to control sexuality in general Sorry. and female sexuality especially. So next year is a lot about individual liberation and freedom. And so what we've seen over the Independence, yes. totally what we've seen over the last couple of years, you know, the Me Too movement and everything, that is now going into a full blown revolution. What's happening now in Iran, the women are the cause of this revolution is that transit with Uranus and with, uh, you know, Jupiter and so on. Um, I will explain a little bit later uh, to that subject, what? but the inner work is, if at any point, really crucial. And as Foster says, you don't have to follow us or you have to follow nobody. You have to follow yourself. You have to follow yourself, but if you do it, then show up. Hmm. Yeah, For show up. The, the thing is also because the seven indicates also a detachment from family. And family has only power over your silence, mm -hmm. not over your voice. So don't drag your family issues or make them reasons why you can or cannot or should or should not. The, a family can only have power over your silence when you say nothing. But the moment you speak, the moment you use your voice and the moment you express your identity, and that's going to be a big subject next year, I'm telling you, Dreams can become reality. So the sun is changing orbit every year. Mm -hmm. And we know that because the weather is changing because of the sun. Right. And we know that that change is affecting Earth. And sunspot activity affects Earth very deeply. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole astrology really mm -hmm. around sunspot activity and around the radiation from the sun. Now, many people feel radiated right now, whatever's mm -hmm. going on on the Earth. Mm -hmm. So there are certain wars going on, other things. So it is very good to get radiation out of your body, especially at the new year. And the way that you do that is a pound of sea salt to a pound of baking soda mm -hmm. in a bath. You lie in it as warm as you can take it. Mm -hmm. um, don't, don't scald yourself or something. Mm -hmm. And stay in 20, 25 minutes. Let and it cool down. While it cools down, that's when the radiation really leaves your body. Right. And all you have to do is lie there. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's very good to purify yourself when you're doing that. Just, you know, good thoughts, breathe, get it well, out of your system. This is so interesting what you say, because a lot of what we call, um, or when we see flu symptomatics, mm. very often, flu symptomatics can also, you know, unless it is a real uh, influenza, but flu symptomatics, interesting enough, are usually caused by radiation. Radiation is, of course, cosmic radiation, there is um, physical radiation from microwaves, from microwaves, from phones. The worst three, is the TV, five, by the way. The don't don't knock the computers and the cell phones and the tablets. The really worst um, radiation radiation source is the TV. Yeah, um, but the the effects usually of when you're exposed to it too much is very similar to a flu, and that's when these. Therapeutic builds, baths yeah. really, really help, I have to say. So um, the, in, other, the other bath you can take, if you fly in airplanes, like we do. Which is radiation. You are 30,000 feet in the air. You are full of radiation. The longer you fly, the more you're in it. Then you take a bath in two pounds mm -hmm. of uh, baking soda. Mm -hmm. And this will start to pull out the radiation from your body. Right. And I've been doing that you know, every week. Mm -hmm. And I feel great. Yeah. Another thing that I love to do just to balance alkan, alkaline and acid for the new year, mm -hmm. I take a bath in apple cider vinegar. Right. Meaning, I just take one bottle of apple cider vinegar, a big one, and I pour it into the whole bath. But these baths as warm are, as you can take it. These baths are therapeutic. So take a shower before. So that, Go, that's what don't expect you. that these things will also cleanse you. No. You have to take a shower, be clean, and then you immerse yourself in these. Um, In infused waters, I want to say, right? Because there is a certain vibration happening. And but um, We were talking about immortality the other day, and you mm -hmm. were saying that we need to keep a certain hygienic quality of our thoughts, uh, a, a certain totally. ethical way of living. Oh, yes. Do you want to oh, clarify yes. that very clearly? Well, you know, I did a little course on Zoom for my Polish um, students. Uh, it was very, uh, very internally organized, nothing publicly. 
in which I explained my kind of astrology and my kind of view into constellations. And automatically you cross the path into alchemy and what alchemy also represents. The highest point, of course, it would be um, the concept or the, the idea of immortality. Mm -hmm. And, you know... Because you talked about the red line inside of somebody's astrology chart done in gold. Right. Which is quite a profound, advanced... Yes. Um, process. Absolutely. And also to understand that in my tradition, or in not tradition, but in my understanding, we don't call a chart houses, we call them temples. Instead of these lines, right, that separate first house, They're second, temples. we don't call them um, houses, we call them temples. And so each temple lasts either six years or seven years. And this is the rhythm. Um, that indicates the path that you're going. Um, but you even calculated people's deaths, the I year can, that they will die I can, through their astrology chart. Which I will not talk about it, but I could, I could, you know. Anyway, <laughs> it, it's and it's not a guarantee that it will happen. No, because but it's indicated. Because death is a transformation. So people who sometimes, you know, when a doctor says, I'm sorry, I can't help you because I don't have the answer, you have three months to live. It's always three months, <laughs> funny enough. I'm telling you, it is a transformative indicator. It doesn't have to do with death always, but it is a form of transformation that is indicated in a, in a chart, the way I learned it and the way I also developed it over the years. But what we want to talk about is the idea that the mental hygiene 2023 is going to be the most profound experience you can have because we experience the bombardment of uh, you know social media and online mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And now we are adding to it, you know, <laughs> but hopefully in a positive way. But the idea is mm. that you have to understand who you think you are. And that identity only happens when you purify, you coordinate and organize your thought models. Again, it's not about getting rid of something. In, in my tradition, in my system, we don't get rid of anything. You have a temper we're going to work with it. You have a nasty side, we're going to work with it. And trust me, I developed a lot of patience because some of you know our <laughs> students, students, nasty, nasty pot steerers sometimes. Yes, we call them pot steerers yeah. or people who... Shit steerers, they, absolutely. They stir up Oh, yes, we just, we just talked over lunch over it. But the idea is, <laughs> it is not yes. something that I would say you have to get rid of it. No. You have to look at it identify it and what value does this action play in your moral in your inner compass in your spiritual identity and does it benefit you to any you see if it doesn't benefit you it will not benefit anybody else and if it only benefits somebody else and not you you are in a toxic relationship with your environment it's a very yeah. simple element well, look, and we're going to see this next year a lot because well, look, of the transits. I'm starting this here talking about sexuality, of course, and magic. But really, it's because I, I know that men masturbate so much of course. that they're wasting their energy instead of turning it into magic. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to use a masturbation to regenerate your body, to yes. do things with energy. And I want people to know that. It's really time. Also, in the sexual act, what you can do and all the different talismans and different things you can mm -hmm. create from mm -hmm. sigils onward mm -hmm. and mantras, everything in sex. Mm -hmm. Another thing that comes up for me in the year, because it's been building for many, many years, is to balance and accept dark and light. It's not all light, 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 light. So I know a great deal of people who go to teachers and all they talk about is this kind of Christian light and only angels and demons are bad and demons are, are the worst and, you know... A lot of shamans do that too, and we do not do that. We do not see things that way. We actually go into the dark side, and we see it completely different than other this people. This is something that we can actually give you as a little mm, New Year's resolution, right? To kind of sit down, and we would create something that we call the, um, the four polar mirror, which is mm -hmm. the four identities, because we have four elements. We are Earth. earthy and we're depressed yeah. and we are sanguistic and we are watery and, you know, and emotional. And to identify these elements, which we do in my tradition, day one, this is what we do. And sometimes it takes months to get to that point of clarity. But we don't get rid of anything. 
We don't say, that is bad, you need to get rid of it. That is the bad thought you need. Because then you deal with control. So, you know, you're trying to get rid of control and then you're being controlled. And that's what I'm that. teaching all year, from Goetia daemons mm -hmm. to explain to people. They are actually, a lot of them were angels, ascended masters, right. all these kind of things. Absolutely. And we have to change our whole idea because Christianity kind of distorted Yeah. Everything. And Hollywood. And Hollywood. And Hollywood did a lot of damage, yes. And people keep reiterating it and it annoys me. Now. Right. Because you haven't, right. you don't, you're not really that spiritual, you don't really see. And people get so angry at me, like, don't bring your spirits with you. Like they're bad, because in their mind, they're bad, and they love to control their but audience. But it is where people come from. Yes. And again, we do not change somebody's beliefs. We're not interested in no. this. We want to expand on it. If you make room for it, and you come, and you're open for it, it and you give it some space, then, you again, you are always in control of how you want something to affect you. Mm -hmm. But if you say to somebody, tell me how to be affected, then you, you're dealing with the same problem backwards. What you're trying to get rid of is what controlled me so far. Now I'm going to exchange that control for a better control. <laughs> the idea is that you start to control yourself. And that is what the seven does. And that is what the, um, what the, uh, the, the um, Neptunian energy does. It makes us, of course, very idealistic and you know it's all nice and all la, la la but in the constellation in which in which the transits will happen uh, from a um, I'm not an astrologer but I deal a little bit with it and I bring it into my work um, there's going to be a big um, um, how can I say this in English a, a uh, reality check well like the change of the sun we are looking at the fruitful darkness Mm -hmm. When the sun begins to change its orbit, even very slightly, it brings up our other side, our mm -hmm. underside, our shadows. Right. And this, we make more informed decisions as a result of that. Mm -hmm. We start to look at our own shadows. We look at the things that we have suppressed, religiously especially, mm -hmm. but also in politics and everything else. We, we see our own shadows. Right. You know, the people who lie to you in politics, whatever, about their identity or yeah. their past like this senator in New York, how he's lying about his past to win an election, and then it comes to haunt him, because basically none of it was true that he told his, right. his people. Right. And he's it's a gay a, man a, in New York. Right. It's a very brazen mentality. I mean, there's, you know, there used to be a time when crooks at least didn't want to be caught. Yes. Now they don't even care if they're going to be caught, because there are fact-checkers out there. I mean, somebody will double-check you, you know? It is a problem with identity and Very feel, much, and yes. again, we're getting into that thing of a man who feels less than, so he creates an alternative identity that's not true, right. in which he lies and lives a duplistic life, meaning there's who he really is, and then there's the fake names, there's the fake background, the fake schools he went to, all that kind of stuff. So when you're with somebody who is that insecure, mm -hmm. or with somebody who has low self-esteem, mm -hmm. and you get into a relationship with them, what do you think will happen? You know, these kind of people, there are many like these, because if you look at the news, the guy who did this Bitcoin thing, the Anna Delvis in the world, and, you know, who cheats themselves through the... the Clark Rockefeller. I call, these people, I call these people fungal people, mm -hmm. because they grow the best in their own atmosphere, in their mm -hmm. own environment. It can be, you know, a toxic environment. It can be a crazy environment. It can be, it can be completely convinced that this is a real reality, but it is a, um, a, a fertile ground where their fungus grows. And everybody who comes in um, is, is being infected, if you want, mm -hmm. by this fungus, you know. Um, like a parasite in your it's, life. It is a parasite it's inside parasitic, your body, outside your body. It is a parasitic energy in the end. But a, a fungus can create um, continuous infections. And you know that cancer is a fungus. Cancer is a fungus. It's it looks like a fungus. It acts like a fungus. It treats like a fungus, and that's why you don't eat mushrooms saying, during cancer. You don't no, eat any that's why we say material. that's why, well. Jesus. You don't eat anything that molds. Right. But um, medicinal mushrooms is a completely different story. Like right. for example, Chaka. there is now yeah. a, a lot of um, evidence that, and we say in homeopathy, what makes you sick heals you in a different mm -hmm. vibration. Mm -hmm. And so I always said that, especially something that is called, um, I think it's called lion's mane. mane. 
lion's mane, and then there's another it's a one. Mushroom. It's a mushroom. And when they're on a medicinal level, mm. they basically are the better cancer, if you want. Mm. They are the healed cancer. And so when you infuse your system with these mushrooms, um, snail tail mushrooms, something like this, I think, you know, I know it in Latin, not in English, but um, they're widely available now. And you have to understand, it is like the better cancer, <laughs> the, the, he the healed cancer is being introduced mm. and it can infuse and inform the um, immune system better. You understand? So, and the immune system is so important because we want to go above or transcend the genetics of our family. Right. Like crystals especially, when you're doing astrology, you're doing homeopathy with astrology, mm -hmm. all sorts of things, and alchemical remedies because mm -hmm. you're saying that we can transcend the physical problems of our parents. What caused oh, yeah, them yeah. to die? Absolutely. What made them get cancer? What made them get so sick? Yes. Or Absolutely. You know, I mean, inherited I, diseases. And there's so. evidence for this because we all carry genetic material, but we don't all express it. Right. You know, I mean, and like and, rhumatism, or arthritis, or right. I mean, I can physical. have, um, um, you know, when I look at my family, you know, and their chronic issues, you know, what my mom goes through at the moment. There is nobody who has this in my yeah. family. You know, and I'm a testament to Christus's work because mm. I'm 62, mm. and he keeps helping me always, regularly, to transcend my family genetics. Oh yeah, to regenerate myself, to be younger and younger. Right, but again. We don't fight anything in the body. We don't fight no. anything in life. But we try to introduce the healthier version of it. Right. Like, like anger is the healthier version of regret. Mm -hmm. Like revenge is the healthier darkness of anger. That's why it feels so good, you know, when you run over somebody. <laughs> um, oh, don't, don't do it. But don't do it. I'm, you know what I mean? That's why... Um, to not be depressed, you get angry. They yes. go, that's why excitement is the better version of what comes before. Mm -hmm. That is the idea. So illness, illness, and we're going to see a lot of illnesses next year. We're not out of the out of the woodwork yet. Um, we're going to see a lot of illnesses uh, and chronic illnesses and genetic. We would call them that suddenly show up, burst out of, that, out of nowhere, out of especially nowhere. after COVID. Uranus, right? Right. right, And people say, it's the vaccines. It's not. It's the genetic. It's not. It's, it is the moment when your consciousness or your subconsciousness, let's believe in it for mm -hmm. a minute, says you are not the person who you are. Mm -hmm. You are not authentic. You don't live authentic. And therefore, you are growing something now in your body that is not meant to be there. Exactly. And that's what it translates to you. I am not meant to be here. So mm -hmm. 2023 is one of those years where you're going to have um, out of the blue situations that can turn out very lucky. You see what I mean? But some, I'm telling you guys, don't delay any kind of um, checkups. Mm -hmm. Look at your physicians. Go to your doctor. Have a good very often a thyroid issue, adrenal issue, and hormones, and um, hormonal, check. hormonal checks. I'm telling you, very often when I look at patients and they say, but doctor, no, or they didn't find, it's, everything is about hormonal exhaustion, and there is something that we call a spiritual burnout syndrome. Yes. Okay, that's when people are really effective, when they're emotionally uh, burnt basically you know it's like a uh, functioning alcoholic right or drug addict they look great they function everything and they're drunk all day and no one would tell or would take it serious because well they're okay except the when same... they start doing a behavior like only eating grapes or only eating oranges right or only drinking too much right. water and right. then you know something's very off when something is completely exaggerated they you know exaggerate. when there's a manic a manic mind. And I remember this one lady sitting in, in a tour, sitting in the St. Catherine place that was full of food. I mean, the food was not, not, not cuisine, but it was edible. It was You're solid. on a pilgrimage. You know, it's a pilgrimage. And she piles these tons, uh, I think like 15 oranges, like a maniac. Then you know something is off. We had another person with water who I called her out for her behavior, and her reaction was to to say, "I'm dehydrated. You're right. I'm dehydrated." 
and drank five gallons of water like in two minutes. That is kind of a behavior when you know somebody is really off and on the verge of a mental breakdown mm. or just crossed it basically because no normal person would do that. Mm. You see, no, no one who's normal in their head would eat 15 oranges because of you didn't some, like the food. Because I didn't like the food, because I didn't like your face, because I didn't like something. So again, this is the projection of toxicity basically and therefore people families especially our people will only have power over you when you're silent mm -hmm. speak up throw it back and you'll see what i mean and you see what i mean and that's what this seven year will do it will show truth it will show realism it will show um it will tell you you were prepared don't complain later you got it i, I showed it to you it is up to us if we want to accept our intuitive communication, basically, you know, because mm. guides, you know, or spirits or whatever, always gives us a little insight. Mm. And how often do we hear people and they say, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Then why are you asking? Mm. You see what I mean? To be that, confirmed. To be confirmed. And very often in sessions these days, people say, I needed a confirmation to know that I'm not crazy. And in the end, they have relief. They mm. see the whole perspective. And the healings and are on a complete different level now. They find a peace. They find mm -hmm. a, a depth of understanding. You know? That's spirituality. Yes. So the first homework I want to give you for 2023 is um, mm. don't always blame yourself for any kind of problem outside. Okay? There is something that is called to be guess. Um, gaslighted to be gaslighted okay it's a real thing I'm telling you the worst thing the worst gaslighting is when you do it to yourself okay that is the idea so if we look at this year 2023 it begins of course with retrograde so don't hope for the best okay it's, it begins with uh, a party <laughs> Mercury that, retrograde it, it yeah. begins with a party that no, and and, um, and Mars retrograde Mars, Mars, yes so not only is confusing it, it starts slowly it's delayed it's also all exhausted basically yeah. it starts slow and um, you know I did a little a little list to to prepare you um, because you know when we are in between major transits mm. Major transits is when a Saturn go, or a, a, um, a Pluto goes now on a 20-year transit. In other words, if I'm supposed, you know, meant to live another 20 years, I will not see another transit of that planet in this time. So um, we have Mars who leaves Gemini. We have Saturn who leaves Aquarius finally. We have uh, the first of the... Um, um, Eclipses. Eclipses who move from uh, Aries and Scorpio. And then we have Venus retrograde, uh, which is rare enough, uh, July to September. Well, I always say to women, you cannot help your children if you do not put yourself first. For example, yeah. You have to put yourself first in your own life, mm -hmm. for your health, for your well-being. You know, many people say, well, I need some time off with my partner. I need to, to regenerate myself and I can't be with my partner the whole time mm -hmm. because I'm working so much, whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I need some alone time mm -hmm. that's regenerative. And the partner has to understand that when they're a bit needy and they want more of your time mm -hmm. and they need to be with you more. So it's a balance. Right. You know, it's a I trade off. Mean, we're, we're, we have a, a personal experience with this this theme with our trainers, right? Um, our friends. Our friends. Everywhere. But it's really interesting because when they finally demand, oh, you don't spend time with me, then they spend time, and then all they do is on, they're on the phone. Or they complain about you, know? you the whole time. They accept you when they first love you, and then slowly, slowly, everything is wrong right. with you. That we That's something that's learned. You learn that so often at home. get ready. 2023 yes. is very much a clarity. That is when Saturn goes from Pisces into Aquarius, finally, um, or goes into Pisces, because uh, he wobbles back and forth, of course. Um, but it is really about what is fantasy, what is reality. Mm, that's very important. That is the most important thing. And when we look at Saturn in its traditional form, it's about karma, it's about discipline, it's about the strictness and so on, but it's also about organization, you know, to organize things, to clarify things, and therefore, 
Who are you? Before you start to demand anything, make sure that you know who the hell you are in this very moment. Without the need to dismantle yourself, I need to get this first and that first and that first before I can go. You, there is no time anymore, literally no time, it's an illusion anyway, to dismantle yourself in, in I don't know how many forms. There's just no, no room for it. Well, to be authentic, authentic. To, to be original. To be real, to finally get to the originality, um, you have to practice authenticity. You have to practice honesty as well. This constellation and this constellation is really, is, you know, reality to fantasy, right? And this is how I want to prepare you for it, and I want you to understand how it works. It is when you turn your weakness into a strength or realize what was bad is actually a blessing because you can use it to get better or to get. Uh, to, to a better place. So this is what Saturn as Bina, as, um, as the mother, as the feminine does. It's not all just bad, 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 and, you know, get it. It's about understanding, of course, who am I and what am I doing. It's to understand the mechanism of what you're choosing, but also to realize these are my weaknesses and that these weaknesses are potential to become strength. Yes. There is no other way around it. So embrace your weaknesses. Don't, ta don't look at your weakness as weakness, okay? Don't say, oh, God, I, am, I have no patience and I have a, a low temp, you know, a big mm -hmm. temper. Then use it. That is the idea. I always say to our clients these days, they say, you know, I'm not patient. Who needs patience if you have a plan? If you know what you want, what kind of patience do you need? Just go for it. You see what I mean? Patience is for people who like to waste time. Sometimes you need patience. When you cook something, you want to make sure it's edible and not that you're getting, you know, I mean, unless you like this idea of, you know. Well, look, my personal trainer said you have to jump up onto this bar mm. and it's black, whatever. And it's a big jump for me. And at 62, you know, I have to jump on this bar and... I mean, initially, I didn't want to do it. I just said no, you know, and I, it's an unbelievable fear. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just jump with my two legs onto this bar. And eventually, you just practice, practice, and then easy, easy. You're just jumping one after another like, mm -hmm. a, like a rabbit. Mm -hmm. So you're learning to overcome your fears. Right. You're learning, you know, even... I could fall. I could break my hip. I'm too old in this. It's all in the head. It's all in the head. It's all in the head. In the head. end, you do the jump. Right. And another, and if you fall, you fall. Okay, they'll catch you. One very beautiful thing, though, in all of this, is once you reach a certain amount of spiritual initiation, when you're undergoing it, mm -hmm. when you're, you know you're going through another level, mm -hmm. then you go through a tremendous expansion. Yeah. So even though things are very difficult this year, and you face yourself, and you, you know, overcome many things in yourself by embracing them, you embrace more of yourself, self-acceptance. Mm -hmm. Then when you go into spiritual practices, the more you do them on a regular basis, and there is an initiation at the end, and that initiation opens you to a different level of expansion. Yeah. I mean, something you cannot speak about, it's so profound. Mm. What you see and what you experience is so large, like in a void. Mm. When we first started entering different void states mm -hmm. and meeting the spirits that live in the void, the fifth well, element. When you talk about the void, the void for me is, of course, Pluto. Mm. Pluto... And I always say, I don't know when Pluto became this destructive force, because it's not. It's not even what the Greek word Pluto means. Pluto means wealth. wealth. It means prosperity. It's actually a complete different story here. But because of the Plutonic effect. But Pluto also represents the time of re uh, discovery. Mm. Because the plutonium was discovered, the atom was discovered, you can split an it's atom. It's volatile, yeah. It, see, you understood what it is, and that's what Pluto means when it shifts a house, or mm. when it shifts a sign, in this case, because Pluto will go into Aquarius next year. I think between um, March and uh, June, um, hmm. yeah, between March and June. Um, and what does that mean to you? Well, the thing is that it will give us an understanding um, because you know Pluto and Uranus and Neptune are all planets that are very social, very global in that sense. But also it... Um, outer planets. Outer planets. So it's always connected a little bit to um, revolution always. to some degree. 
uh, breaking down barriers, breaking down limitations. It started already. And you've been talking a lot about the Ukraine, that you feel it eventually will be split up into it, two. It will be split up into two. Part Russia, part Ukraine. Right. And that'll be the final denouement, the resolution. Oh, well, the, the resolution for, for now. For now. Uh, but you see, I, really I, definitely, I, I definitely see the breaking down of barriers, and that begins around March, April. Mm -hmm. And for me, it has a lot to do with uprising, what we see in Iran, what we see in Russia, you know, Putin thought this is going to be over in two weeks and this is now going to, what, year two or something. Um, you know, it's an underestimation of the strength of people. You just can't waltz in. But it is also, Pluto is also a mirror. Mm. And it will mirror, it's a dark mirror, it's a black mirror usually, and it will mirror back to everyone, including those who cause these wars and cause dictatorship, their own reflection and negativity cannot look at itself without being destroyed by it. Evil See, does not like to look in a mirror. It, not really. It and doesn't, they, people always say it hides in a mirror, but not really. No, no. no. Negativity does not like its own reflection. Mm. It will avoid that, you see. And so it is, again, uh, a rebellious time for me because, um, again, all these plans go back and forth and back and forth, but eventually he will settle, Pluto will settle um, uh, for 20 years, and that is to init initiate rebellion, change. Self-liberation. And that has to do person in globally, but that has to do personally, individually with self-liberation, mm. you see. And then with uh, systems will collapse if they don't, modernize, they will collapse. There is no repair period here. So what I said very often to companies, right, when they said, you need the internet. Oh, no, no one needs it. They, they are, don't exist anymore. Then <laughs> the social media came and I said, you need social media presence. Oh, no, we don't want this. They don't exist anymore. Um, we don't need, um, you know, glow. they don't exist anymore. If you don't go as and a company, as a as a business person, especially, or in spirituality, to modernize the old rituals, the old idea absolutely. of religion and spirituality has to all be. Modernized. That's why. That's why I learned one thing, and a teacher very very early said to me, "Enjoy the rituals you're learning now, because there's going to be a time when they're going to be invalid. They're not, they're not. They're not going to work anymore because the speed by which we go through the universe and the the value where these rituals come." doesn't match anymore. Yes. Not that they're not working or they're bad, but they don't have anymore a... How can I say this? A, a, know, a coherence in our world? Yeah. There's, you know, these rituals, if there were people that would say, I don't even know how you live anymore. Yet you, you know do I mean? the old rituals, but on some level you're modernizing. I definitely break them down. I definitely... To their essence. Oh, yeah. Like in chaos magic, you're now doing the next step of chaos magic. Right which is to simplify, keep the essence of it and what actually works in a ritual mm -hmm. so that we, we can throw out all the other garbage. Yeah. In other words, what used to be... Which were overlays from different time periods. You know, what used to be uh, acceptable is now and belief systems, completely yeah. broken down in how we choose to live. Mm. So these choices are also inevitable. You know, they're really... In but you know, in shamanism, people do rituals exactly the way they were taught to do the rituals. Mm -hmm. But we don't always remember the original ritual, I have to tell you. Whenever you hear a teacher, because you say Like this, the tradition. Whenever yes. you hear a teacher who speaks only about tradition, I do too. Because I say, as a tradition, that's where I come from. But it does not mean that's what I do. I just did something with astrology and people were quite versed in so And they said, I never even heard that. Where can I read this? You cannot. This is something that comes through my understanding and then also through the willingness to break down and say, let's see how this would feel if, if it would be um, adjusted or, or um, yeah, adjusted to our time and well, to the way we live. Well, a tells me you, you can know? only do the ritual this way and it has to be done this way because it's been done this way since the beginning. And that means that these people are not educated. And you, I get quite Very upset. Simple. Yeah. And then my own, the spirits around me yeah. are telling me, change the ritual. Right. The spirits themselves say, simplify this. You don't need this. You don't need this. This is an overlay from, you know, something that's kind of post-historical and, and patriarchal, whatever. You don't need any of this in the ritual. It, it doesn't contribute to the ritual. Yeah. And then I do the ritual and many shamans get angry at me because what happened to the ritual? 
you know, half of it is gone. And that's the way it's meant to be. Mm -hmm. So if I teach the medicine wheel or I'm doing a vision quest or whatever, you become much more intuitive and you listen to the spirits now. This is, this you modernize is, it. This is very much in the Jupiter movements because Jupiter or Hesed as we call it, but Jupiter movements, whenever they, trans, they do transitions and they go until, um, they go from May this year to May next year. Mm -hmm. And these transitions are, um, if I'm, I think I'm uh, they're between Aries and Taurus. So from just movement, fire, they go to Taurus. And Taurus is very stable, very mm -hmm. earthy, very grounded. And that means that um, the expansion that re uh, Jupiter represents, the longevity, the opportunity, the wealth, we want to make sure it has roots. Mm -hmm. So if you're that's next, if year. Your that's next year. If your process, your idea, your spiritual pro and so on, doesn't have roots, right. forget it. Really forget it. You need to understand where your roots are, what your moral compass is, what your business knowledge is. Because sometimes, you know, people talk to me, they want to be influencers, you know, as if I know how to do that. But the one thing I know is, and I can, you see, in, in, I, I see people for five minutes and I know exactly who they are. Very often these people don't understand themselves very well and they don't have a disciplined plan to, to, to transact. But here they are photographing their breakfast <laughs> and think that is enough to be an influencer and get paid for it. But you see, when there's no creative output, if it doesn't change your audience's um, style of life, basically, if you don't inspire somebody, if you don't motivate somebody, then you're not an influencer. That is what influencer is. It's not just taking nice photos, right? But the idea is really interesting that everything that needs change, that you want to change, it has to be on the foundation of your roots. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have roots, this is the year to create them because Jupiter will be in Taurus and that is the expansion of roots. It's like it's like Avatar, right? When all these trees are connected underneath the planet. And that's exactly what it is. Isn't that also what they say about our trees, that they're all kind of interconnected? Underneath the underneath soil. Underneath the soil. And I, I totally believe Over this. whole continents. Yeah. Especially, how you talked about mushrooms. Yeah. They're some of the largest socially organized yeah. you know, so organisms. We're, we're definitely going into a period where freedom, individuality, personally, will become a huge uh, concept and as a collective we will be really look at our um, we will look at our values at our collective values you and, know, and how they need to shift in the end this man was talking to me about darkness and he you know was very Christian and he didn't believe in darkness and I said well why are you putting down Lucifer then Lucifer is light it is tremendous light mm -hmm. it is nothing to do with darkness actually um and you're completely wrong, and you're projecting onto Lucifer this, this idea that, uh, uh, you know, you don't realize that when you die, you go into this great light, which is Luciferian. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand actually what you're talking about. You're talking about something that is a prejudice, that is a kind of, I don't know, spiritual racism, and has nothing to do with the truth. That's what it is. So me, when I go into sexuality, and I'm understanding sexuality, you know, I, because I immerse myself in the Vimeos, mm -hmm. I completely fill myself in a current, mm -hmm. you know, a magical current, a shamanic current. And it, I got to the point when I started with, if it's consenting between adults, if you're not doing anybody harm, if it's not rape or, you know, whatever, we, we talk about, you know, the anything things you where, don't want. anything you don't want, then it's fine. Yeah, yeah. So it's taken me a long time in my life to finally say, it's okay, that orgy, it's okay, these swingers, it's okay, all these things, if it's mutually consented. Right. And how can I help these people now to go into enlightenment through and their sexual is, practices? And that is the point. And that's where I'm going. That is the point, to take you out of your kink to the next level of value. Mm -hmm. Not to say, listen, you're a pervert, or no. don't do that, or don't go here. That doesn't exist. And there's See, an East and West there. version of that too. Absolutely, to teach people. absolutely. But I think because I think uh, because a lot of people open the dialogue of identity and sexuality, mm -hmm. suddenly, even to my surprise, I have to say we see people talk about their transsexuality, about their uh, homosexuality, about their 
um, being asexual, by the way, yes, yes. you know, uh, but also religious sexuality. I, I was just watching somebody um, who, describing the Amish sexuality, mm. you know, and the rules by which they have to live. But this is about Would, freedom. It is so fascinating. So fascinating. Would I want this? Of course not. To have somebody who tells me what part of the pants I can open in order to have, you know, hmm. sexuality and God forbid I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Or some of these Amish kids who don't even know until 15, 16 where babies come from. Hmm. You know, I'm just repeating what, what, what uh, comes from that source. But it's interesting that spirituality and sexuality has always come hand in hand. They as, go together. Absolutely. And Sexuality is nothing but a, a way to to express your true self, basically. You and see? communicate. And, of course, the moment mm -hmm. of orgasm mm -hmm. is, in fact, that moment in which you enter a kind of void. Absolutely. You enter into the oblivion. Absolutely. And that is a very important moment to do magic. Yeah. yeah. And so next year, I want to begin by teaching that because I think that's revolutionary. Uh oh, okay, let's and see this how is, that's going to go. And this is what you're talking about in 2023. And to break all these taboos, all these that's old exactly, ideas. That's exactly that what it is. Even yes. I've held because of my parents, because yeah. of the society I live in, right. and that's finished for me now. Right. right. Not that I have to do it. I don't have to enter an orgy or anything. That's my choice. But I will never judge somebody else for what they do mm -hmm. sexually anymore. Because it is a way of trying to... because. When people hide their sexual mm, pleasures, it is they're hiding a part of their identity. You know, it is, it's either guilt or shame, but that plutonic shift, and then Jupiter comes on top of it, it will expose people. And like, like you say, you know, there is this guy who is a homosexual Republican, which I think should From be, New York State, yeah. They should be punished altogether. Who but lied about everything. Let's be, let's be. Let's be loving. Who lies about every detail in his where life? Where you went basically. to school and you know, where, where you went for you know, work. I mean, crazy. A crazy amount. To hide what you really did. Right. Which was to steal in a kind of, um, you know, fake financial structure. That's a kind of pyramid, <laughs> right? And that is Sorry. not correct. You see, I sneeze there. I yeah. said, we say yes. In German, we call it Beniesen. <laughs> we say yes to it. Anyway. Because people are being exposed still. You get exposed. Absolutely. For what they have done in yes. the past. So, again, it is not, from our perspective, a judgment when somebody says, you know, and we hear this a lot, I have affairs with somebody else, but I'm married. And we know the families or we know the partners. I don't judge this no. at all. All I hear is, I'm looking for a way to express the most of myself. The rest of myself. You yes. see what I mean? All and unfortunately, it includes sometimes when it comes to sex, it includes other people. Mm -hmm. But it's really just the long way to say, this is who I am without any shame and any guilt. And therefore... Because um, commitment is freedom. And therefore, and there, yes, of course, up, commitment is freedom, That's absolutely. What but what I want to um, well, add... Mm, my friend in Brazil, she said to me, I slept with a shaman to get enlightened because he said he would enlighten me if I had sex with him. Mm -hmm. And of course, did I, I asked her afterwards, did you have enlightenment? She said, no. Mm -hmm. So my, my video on sex and enlightenment is, now this is how you do it. This is what the shaman didn't teach you. Right, right. And I do believe that is part of every person's mm -hmm. sexuality now, mm -hmm. if they want it, if they really want to go to the next step. In many, 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 many rituals of the old style rituals, it is a prerequisite to be sexually abstinent for a certain time. As a purification, As a form, but not building only, energy. It is to really build the stamina and to build the energy. And it is understood as one element or a very subtle power within the nervous system, which it is, of course. No. Um, but what I also want to say is, and this is something that might be a surprising element here, the seven, a seven year is in its nature also a year of completion. Mm. Because when we look at Gematria, for example, and Gematria seven is, um, it's the association with a divine or um, sanctification. And of course it's considered um, in many scriptures um, seven refers to the creation of the world and then it took Resting. seven days to create it. So the seventh day is a creational 
achievement, so to speak. So this is also a year which on a subtle level, a mystical level, an inner level tells you if you have worked on yourself so far, this is a year to complete it. And if you start now, make it your goal to complete this journey, mm. which will take seven years. It's a seven-year cycle. We are complete beings in our seventh year. Our aura doesn't form until we are seven. And there are seven chakras, seven colors of the rainbow, seven notes in the musical. Um, I love the seven chakras, right? the seven Pleiades. But at the same time, I'm much more interested, of course, as I get older, in the channels in the body. Mm -hmm. Because the connectors, the channels are more important than the chakras. Yeah. Just as you talk about the layers of the aura, what's more important is the matrix. It's the matrix that keeps it together. Absolutely. Right. Yes. And we say that also to learn about the, the meridians. But also to see, to see in, in the symbology of this number, how often it appears and what mm -hmm. a value it has. Um, it's seven. the seven symbolic pillars of wisdom, for example. Yes. The seven hermetic laws. The seven colors of a rainbow. The seven yes. colors of a rainbow. The seven tubes of a panpipe. For well, example, the music to get to the um, active. Yes, the, the the seven Greek vowels used to to um, by by the Gnostics, right? Yes. Alpha, epsilon, eta, iota, omicron, epsilon, and omega. Um, the Tibetan book of the seven books of wisdom right. um, of the I think it's called the the right path. Um, um, the seven metals in alchemy, the the colors of the rainbow, the the seven notes, the the one, the seven wonders in the world. So we are basically, and this is what I want to say to you is, um, um, this is the idea. Vibrationally, the number of a year in magic, in my magic, the way I developed it and the way I extracted it from my teachings and my teachers, is that. It, ref it has a vibrational match to every seven year in history. So when we have, um, when we look at a seven year and it represents female, also female um, initiation, mm -hmm. right? We have a connection in time and legend where the seven female initiate, uh, um, uh, um, the seven virgins were being defended by the seven knights when they confront Galat. In the Grail legends. In the great Grail legends, exactly. So when we look at... Um, For Galahad, yeah. If we look at the seven, it means that because it's a, it's, it's a vibration of completion and that is for the world, whatever the world globally started seven years now is completed and it has to get completed it's done now it's finished the damage happened the positive happened everything and in this time when pluto is about to transit right and to go into his next journey now they found the breakthrough of creating free energy basically right mm. now basically in other words uh, in order to create, you need less energy in order to create more energy. And that is very much Nikola Tesla, basically. So we are at the verge of the new aeon of energy, which is free energy. Of course. That is the idea. And exactly with the completion of seven-year cycles from a global point. So if you have personally a seven-year, that means also Me. that what you have a seven-year. Because year, I am a seven. Right. In my and what, whatever you've done, seven years before mm -hmm. now it comes to a completion it comes to a point of you know that's how far you can go it is called the internal completion and the nine is the external completion because yes. cycles go from one to nine then comes ten which is one so always nine years is a a physical cycle but the inner completion happens every seven years mm -hmm. so if you have a seven year cycle um, and you do this by uh, by counting birth day, birth month, and the current year, which would be 2023, you know, by the time uh, this is relevant. So, so it I'm is born 7-11, so mm -hmm. that's 18, 18, plus the year, 2023, seven. which is a 7. Right. It's what 11 is? plus 7 plus 7. Which 25. Is 25. Which is a 7. Which is a 7, which means one way or another. I'm back to the 7. You are reaching and completing 
the great inner work that you started seven years Which ago. Which we call spiritual perfection. Right. So at this point, I would say go back seven years and see what happened. See what year it was and what, you know, a completion year is always a victory year, by the way. It's always a year that says you made it, you've done it, but it's an internal victory. experience. Um, the ninth year is an external. I go back further into many seven cycles because also this friend of mine who slept with a shaman and mm. he did enlightenment. That was my first Vimeo that I worked on. The second Vimeo I'm working on is Hawaiian shamanism. Mm -hmm. And this is because I had a friend, Diana Cirillo, Diana Vivanti, who was a kahuna, mm -hmm. who was found in New York City and a Hawaiian teacher said, you are the lineage carrier of our entire lineage. Now she's an Italian, mm -hmm. she was not Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. And she said, how can I accept this giant lineage, mm -hmm. which goes back centuries? And they said, you are the reincarnation of the person that has to do this there lineage. So she began to teach me Hawaiian kahuna wisdom. Mm -hmm. But everywhere we go, mm -hmm. we run into Hawaiian people. Mm -hmm. If I today. go today, everywhere I go, <laughs> today. like they pick up on it as if they're mm -hmm. blessing yeah. it, as if they're, they they said, you're going to teach Hawaiian shamanism, you're going to teach, not to appropriate their culture or something, just to be respectful, no. can I say just something? to talk about Diana. Can I, say, can I say something, because it's a big thing in the U.S., it's about cultural appropriation. Mm -hmm. Let me say this, culture has always, is not exclusive, culture has always been shared, mm -hmm. okay? So, when we see, for example... Um, you know, you're appropriating Hawaiian culture. No, we don't. We respect it and we are being influenced by it. Yes. You know, and this is our interpretation. Culture has never stayed in one place. Are you all insane? I have sometimes, you know, people get upset on social media when they say, oh, look at this singer. She has now braids like mm. a black person and this is cultural appropriation or don't eat my food like this. Don't call it this. Mm -hmm. Don't make funny interpretations of my dialect. Mm. Get over yourselves. Get over yourselves. First of all, we should make fun of Koreans and Chinese and <laughs> Russians and Greeks and Americans and every we should make fun of everything because let's get over ourselves. Like a comedian. Yes. Like a comedian. We've got to laugh about it. But you know, there are people who, <laughs> you know, they get a stick up their butt and they're saying, you know, but the idea is, then we would, I mean, then imagine if they say, this is an African culture, don't, you, don't touch it. Then we would say to black people, this is a white culture, don't touch mm -hmm. it. Isn't it crazy? Well, why are we loving Las Vegas? Not just because it's a Fortuna city or a mm -hmm. Tihei city, mm -hmm. but also because there's so much diversity here. Oh, Everywhere we go, I'm telling there you, are African Americans, there are Chinese, there is every, every ethnic background. This is what Everywhere. was for me one of the biggest the best things we could do to move here. It's not homogenous. Because I said to Foster, finally, the world looks exactly the way I know it. That's creative, you know, too. Because where we stayed in, um, for a certain time in, in Palm Indian Springs, Wells. Indian Wells, no. it, was, it was Republican white. And I don't say this in a negative way, but I said to him, there's not one black person here. And I said, oh, you want to see these people? Well, there were in a the, few. In the back. Very in small. The, in the, I said, where is the diversity here? Where is, where is everybody? Coming to Vegas. Where's the interaction mm -hmm. in diversity? Where's Coming the creativity? to Las Vegas, I have everything from black to European to African to yeah. cowboys. Because they're speaking you French know, on the sidewalk and then they're speaking Italian. You know, they're speaking, this they're is here. something that I really, really start to enjoy here. So please. It's a get, world city. Get over yourselves. A very, a person that we, a, a woman that we love very much and we appreciate is Sally Ann Glasswin, who is famous in New Orleans as being one of the voodoo queens. Okay. She is a scrawny white <laughs> Jewish white woman from New York who was initiated. She had a calling. In Haiti, into, yes. In, uh, right. I mean, there's a big story in it. So, of course... No prejudice. And she's wonderful when she does it. We, we've been very generously invited to her rituals, and it was just amazing. Wonderful. And of it changed course, our lives. And of definitely. course, in that tour that we went, somebody said, where did you guys go? Black guy. And says, we went to Sally, and, oh, let me tell you something about her. You know, my mother is the true Voodoo and she's just white. We met her, too. And, oh, and we and met we her, too. We loved her. We loved and her. she was wonderful, too. <laughs> but it was this, all I could say was, there's enough room for There's all enough of us. room for everyone in this world. You see what I mean? But it was literally then already, but it wasn't that dominant. It was a question of can we appropriate culture? As long as you don't ridicule the culture, as long as you don't reduce oh, it something, 
And you're respectful, absolutely. I mean, when I went to Egypt, I wore a um, um, galab galabea, I think it's yes. called, right? And one, I looked good in that crap, okay? I looked good in it, okay? <laughs> and people said, you look really amazing. No one said, how dare you wear this? Because then I would have gone to some Egyptian and say, how dare you wear Lacoste and Asian m t-shirts? That's well, my culture. Well, look, you see what I mean? We can't do it in that way. I'm just saying this. Let me just finish this. Diana thing. was in Hawaii. She had a leaf on top of right. her head. It was raining and she's calling the Amakua. And she's on the phone with me at the exact same time, explaining to me everything that's going on. Yeah. And is that an appropriation of a culture or is she being purified, going through the well, ritual? The fact is that she has a result she and she knows what she's doing and she does it in a respectful way. Yes, she does. You know, spirit will choose it's people. Mm -hmm. And then we see, and then we see ca Catholic housewives finding their way to witchcraft. Then we see black people becoming ministers. Then we see um, For Mexicans returning to their Mayan roots. But this is the craziest thing that Mexicans think they're Catholic, you know. I mean, get a grip on yourselves. You're being brainwashed, you know. Uh, or that Greeks, I am a Greek, that we are orthodox. We are mm. polytheistic. We are polytheistic. Or, or the fact that you grew up in Germany as a hermetic teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, certainly sexually abused, all that kind of stuff. But you overcame poverty, everything. Because it's the true path of hermetics. To overcome, overcome these things. Something. To transcend each right. step in your life. Did You're I, an authentic well, person. Did I like it? No. no. <laughs> Would I choose it again? No. But... In the context of what I chose, that's what happened. You know, I learned Kabbalah. I learned yes. Kabbalah. I'm not Jewish. Mm. I'm not Jewish. I don't even, you know. And the rabbi teacher said, and the, are you circumcised? And, you know, no, the, first thing, yet. the first thing my rabbi said when I was there, he said, <laughs> are, you, are you Jewish? And I said, no. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. Yahweh will never let you through the gates and never. And I said, listen, I, it took me weeks to find you. I'm not leaving. So... You know, and I was not even 11 yet. I said, I need to study this. I was very, trust me, very determined. Uh, and then he said, are you at least circumcised? And I didn't know what that means. So he explained, he said, no, then I wasn't. Now you know, too much information, but here you go. And he said, absolutely not. Yahweh will not let you in if you have foreskin. Like, ah. I die. like <laughs> is it crazy? I die and God says, drop your pants. Ah. Because, oh no, that's hanging down, you know, crazy, crazy ideas. Oh, but he always yes. said, you're going to be a, you would be a wonderful rabbi one day if you only were Jewish, but don't teach those women. What I did all my life is I, I taught 90% women, <laughs> you know, but not, of course, the Hebrew version, no. I, the metaphysical version, because I am a Western style teacher. That's where I come from. I didn't run to the Middle East well, and copy everything. When I was 11 to 14, I was a Pentecostal Christian. Mm -hmm. I used to lay on our hands, I used to prophesy in churches, and I used to do basically shakti put yeah. to a lot of people. They would all fall on the ground. Right. We had Bible studies and prayer groups and everything at a very young age. Mm -hmm. We only read the Bible, you know. And then I saw through hypocrisy, I saw what the actual pastor was doing with another woman. I saw their anti-gay attitudes and more. There were many other prejudices. And... I eventually said, no, this is not the original teaching. This is not yeah. truth for me. Yeah. There are many good things here, but I'm filled with the Spirit, but I'm moving on. Mm -hmm. And I met yogis, and I met Tibetan teachers, and I met many people, right. uh, Sikhs, everyone, and wonderful teachers. And I left. I was only 14. Yeah. And I studied Jung, and I studied these things. So I'm always rebelling and transforming from something. But no I, one accuses you of cultural appropriation. No. Of course not. You're but, always breaking out of because that's where I was at that time. That's how I could express my spirituality at mm. the time. You know, as, well, as certainly they didn't like gay people. And then you go into the next because you're course. always crying, crying to tell your sins. I mean, eventually it gets gets tired. I mean, how much can you tell? But and then you don't believe in sin. And so you keep going into original blessing. Anyway, it it developed into something much more. Yeah. You know, and then when you meet real shamans, you know, it's there's no time. It's a different point. You're in something that is impeccable now. Yeah. You're in something where every second, every movement, everything you do, you're watching yourself, you're aware, mm -hmm. uh, to the degree that, you know, I had a shaman who was always walking through the walls. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you're aware of we are in a, another reality here. Mm-hmm. We're in a very altered state. When How I'm with you, we? sometimes mm-hmm. you bend. You like to bend reality. Mm-hmm. The question is, when people say, "How can certain phenomena happen?" What is this? Mm-hmm. You know, it's a supernatural. It is not supernatural. It has nothing to do with anything supernatural. We create phenomena when we don't believe in the limits of that reality. Yes. That's when you can bend and do. This is the only idea. I watched people. I've done it myself. I, I, I developed in certain ways, and I've seen things that you would, your eyes would fall out if I tell you what I've seen and what I experienced. And people say, how can I do that? How can I get there? How can I develop this? And I say, it's not what you do. It's what you believe. Mm-hmm. As long as you believe that this is reality and that are the pitfalls of reality and that's how it works, forget it. Like when we were in Hawaii and, and you saw the Menahuni, mm-hmm. the little people, and mm-hmm. they had a whole community right. at Eon, Eo, in, in Maui. And nobody could see it. And you said, don't you see these people? And no one could see it. So you took a photo mm-hmm. of the Menahuni. And everybody in the group Does looked it. at the picture and all of a sudden said, we can see this, but now we can see them. Mm-hmm. And we respect them. Now we know they're there. And that is the work that you do when you're a spiritual worker. Really what you're doing is you're breaking down what we call the limits of reality. And that is when people have synchronicities, and supernatural experiences that's you know there is nothing supernatural about it It has nothing to do with reaching another realm you're not astral traveling somewhere no. you're not going anywhere you're not doing anything there. what you really do in essence is you have crossed your own belief limit and by saying time is an illusion which it is therefore time travel is complete nonsense because everything happens simultaneously you can visit summon and call forth every experience that you need that is important for you in one in one second. Like when you're in Haleakala Crater in an extinct volcano, mm-hmm. and we were all just sitting there calling Hecate, mm-hmm. and she came as a wind. A wind. And she uh, moved uh, completely I mean, around us in a circle right. and acknowledged, I mean, people fainted, whatever, right. but it was a profound moment yeah. of, here I am. I'm here, you're calling me. And uh, how close you are to her in a volcano. Absolutely. We're watching all mm-hmm. these Netflix shows about volcanoes, mm-hmm. and it's very fascinating mm-hmm. because we are preparing ourselves for the idea of this tremendous fire, mm-hmm. this tremendous inner revolution, mm-hmm. this volcano inside that's opening when we finally realize our own truths. Like I always, beyond I always wondered, I always wondered, and I said to my guide many, many years ago, and I remembered it lately. Why would a place like Atlantis go down with all that advancement and all that um, possibility and technology. And amazing trust people. Me, compared to that, we live in the Middle Ages now, yes. the Dark Ages. And my guide said, because the Atlanteans started to believe in the limit of what was possible. And so Atlantis had to go down to make room for the new possibilities. And everything that goes down in that sense, everything that ends has a limit in how it can serve you. And next year, 2023, is a little bit a year like that. You can only go as far your belief can serve you. And if it doesn't serve you, it has to leave. Like leave. the end of it a has, relationship, like the end of a know, marriage. Like and that is what we call the apocalypse in that sense of disaster. I know there are people who say, you know, a big solar flare will come every mm-hmm. year they talk about it. Also, every couple of years, the world will end. Also, every it's not going to end. Years. It's very young, I mean, the world. You know what I mean? The world hasn't started yet. I mean, stop <laughs> yes, saying that, you know. That. But the idea you haven't even is, fully incarnated yet. But the yeah. idea is from a metaphysical and an inner point, it is a big year of fire. And I think that this fire is a transformative fire, but it also means that it will show you that no matter what you try and do, if you believe that is reality and the reality is and my belief are the same thing that's it that is as much as you can go that's why all these people we know right um they buy books never really read them and they read them <laughs> they read them half and they run from one workshop to the next and they, they don't finish through. anything yet but this is what metaphysical means it means to not accept the beliefs or the limits of your belief and the moment you um, in let me say inactivate, is that the right term? Yes. 
inactivate your, your belief in that, you have access to pretty much everything. That's all it is. It's not flying around, traveling around, getting crazy ideas, calling somebody, you know, and... Doing a thousand hits of ayahuasca. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, <laughs> that is, okay, I'm no judgment here. Yeah. Of no course, I'm judging it, but I'm giving it to myself. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, because that is just shortcuts. But that's what plant material does. That's what mushrooms do. And that's what, Certainly uh, you know, opens you they open you, they show you where your belief ends and your reality starts. Mm. That's what Castaneda calls the um, separate reality, you see. But it really indicates that, and I want you to keep this in mind in your spiritual journey, you're not going anywhere. This is not a marathon to run and get somewhere faster than other people. It is to cross the limits of your belief, what reality is, that boundary. And the moment you cross it, mm. everything is there. Because everything exists at the same time. And that's going to be an interesting year. All our teachings, all our workshops, all our sessions will, in the, will, will be seeded by that idea, you know. And that is the concept. You can learn as much as you want, but if your belief is rooted in that reality that you think is the limit, you know, save your money. That's all I'm saying. Save your money, save your time. You need to cross that belief mm. that is the idea it's quite a, a uh, to the separate reality to the what we call the separate reality again the seven mm -hmm. this this is what mystics talk about right. in spirituality right you see the final and, attainment of the year 2023 right and again wherever you find a seven seven show up as numbers show up as forms teachers, teachers. seven um, is the teacher you might want to look at... Um, too many sevens in a birth chart can make you quite imbalanced. Well, you know, too many sevens also means um, the eternal search. I mean, yes. when are you finished? You know, yes, in that sense. Much. But also the idea is... Um, One seven, seven, two seven is, is okay. that you want to complete something. Yes. You know, that is always the indication. My understanding has to lead to some form of victory through completion. It is victory, mm -hmm. not just perfection, because perfection is the antithesis mm -hmm. to creativity. Mm -hmm. We should call it spiritual victories. That's what it is. That's why they come back. And that is what we will learn in 2023, our own personal spiritual victories. Absolutely. Absolutely. That transcends ourselves. Absolutely. Transcending is the key word. Well, that was... We're so happy in the separate reality. Yeah. But it's also important to be happy in this reality and, and to understand the that there is no separation. There is no separation. Unless you believe there is a separation. That is the idea. Um, I don't know what this tree is listening to, I tell you, but this is a Christmas tree. Mm. And um, this is what we wanted to kind of give our input in, what to expect a little bit and from an astrologic point, a metaphysical point, a spiritual point. And remember, we are building, we are now about to start season five of our Vimeo series. Which is amazing. Which is, I, I've, seen, the, I've seen the list. Details will come out in the next couple of days. And um, some of the workshops, some of our trips, um, Japan is coming up. Japan, by the way. we're going there to Kyoto for the beautiful cherry blossoms awesome. to eat that incredible food mm -hmm. and to do a spiritual journey of Japan. Absolutely. And, and is, Crete, we're also going to Crete, and we're, we're doing many we're things. We're doing many things, so there's yes. enough for everybody, and we would love to see you, we would love to, uh, you know, if you would share, like, like and it. subscribe this, please, um, you know, um, we, need, we need the uh, support of this channel, uh, so that we know that it's worth it, and uh, you get something out of this, and... Um, the Christmas tree itself is a journey. Yeah, of course. It's meant to be that, yeah. that Orion. To, to go through the solar system, through all the lights in the universe. The Christmas tree is the cone of power That's what it of is. the universe. That's what it is. And traveling up through the black hole. Yeah. The star. Right. Betelgeuse. But Hopefully. There we go. So, we want to leave you <laughs> for now, for this time. Thank you so much for tuning in again and for keeping us company and for allowing us to keep you company. And uh, we say goodbye and we see you again. Hopefully, I think one more podcast we're going to do before the uh, year ends. Happy New Year. And uh, in case we don't hear you, don't see you, Happy New Year. Uh, or choose the happiness of the year you want. Okay? So, have fun. Enjoy. 
and um, get ready for um, the mystery of 2023. The mystery of 2023. All right. So take good care mm. and uh, be nice and be kind to yourselves. Mm. Bye. 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 Take care.